So we're going to move on to the second way of um, doing your monogram. So if you don't have an embroidery unit at home, you can still create really nice uh, monograms, but you can do it free motion. And uh, we're going to do ours today on the beautiful new 570, the new 570. Uh, you can tell the difference because this is much longer. It has a much longer distance from the right of the needle. It has eight and a half inches. Um, so we're going to be using that in a minute. But first of all, we're going to de design our monogram. So I've just kept it really simple. What I've done is I've just gone onto Word and I've had a look at the true type fonts on my computer and I've just chosen one I like the look of. And we've gone, to, gone for this one here. I think it's called Lucida Handwriting, something like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace it out onto a bit of stitch and tear. So this is um, just stitch and tear that you'd use for your embroidery. So I'm gonna place it over and I'm just going to trace round my first letter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on top of my toweling and use it as a template so I can sew over it. And I'm also going to have some stabiliser underneath the toweling so that will be as normal, a normal stabiliser. So I'm just going to do A there and I'm going to arrange it nicely so it looks attractive monogram just draw around now the good thing about having this stitch and tear on top is a it gives me some a guide so I know what I'm doing and B it will prevent all the um, the pile of the toweling popping through um, it'll flatten it all down and give me a much nicer area to sew on so now I've created my monogram I just need to hoop up now for this, um, for this version, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stitch out on a spare piece of white toweling and I'm then going to um, uh, create, once I've stitched it out, I'm going to create it in, uh, turn it into a pocket shape, which I'm then going to sew on to my dressing gown. I'm going to do it this way because um, it's easier to manoeuvre a small piece of toweling like this underneath the machine and also uh, if it goes wrong, I will start again. Uh, instead of going directly onto the garment. But if you wanted to, you could sew directly onto your, um, to your bathrobe. Okay, so I need a piece of stitch and tear to go underneath. And then my design is gonna go on the top. And then I'm gonna take my frame. Now I'm using um, a frame from the embroidery unit just because I, that's what I have here. But you can always use a wooden frame, a normal wooden um, embroidery hoop if, when you're doing this at home. Um, so I'm gonna hoop up, just get that roughly in the middle. A bit of, just gonna loosen it off. I'm gonna stand up, I need a bit of oomph to get this in all quite thick. Let's loosen it off a bit more. There we go. So that's all nicely, nicely tight. And now I can go and get my machine ready for stitching out. So I've got my machine threaded up and I've attached my BSR. So I'm going to I'm going to show you two ways. The first way I'm going to show you is using the BSR, which is the Benina Stitch Regulator. Now the Benina Stitch Regulator obviously is designed for free motion quilting, so it keeps your stitches nice and regular and even, and it's a wonderful invention. But for today's project, I'm just going to use it for some thread painting because I just want to fit want to fill in my letters with stitch. So um, because of that, I'm going to use the zigzag option. So I'm going to select zigzag. Uh, we're going to take it down to three. And my length, I'm going to take down to point, point 0.8. I'm going to choose mode one. And I'm going to um, operate it with my foot control so I can start and stop nice and easily. It's already recognized that I've got foot 42 on. I'm just going to lower my foot pressure. So I want to take my foot pressure right down to zero because I don't need any pressure because I want to be able to move my hoop around freely. So once I'm all set up uh, then I'm ready to go. So I can put my hoop underneath the machine. If you are using the BSR you just need to make sure that your hoop's big enough 
So you've got lots of room because the BSR is a slightly wider foot but, um, to move that around. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my threads to the top. I've lowered my feed dogs. Oh, no, I haven't. So I'm going to lower my feed dogs. And that's showing me there that I've lowered them. Needle down, needle up. So I'm going to bring both threads to the top. And then lower my foot again. And then I just need to start to sew. And I'm going to fill in my letter A using my BSR. And here we go. So I find if I do short sections and just go over them, then I can fill it with stitches. It's lovely and smooth and easy to use. And then I'm going to change onto a straight stitch and I'm just going to go around the edges just to give the edges a bit of a neaten up. Okay, so that's my A full of stitches. Now another way you can do it is you could do it with a foot 24 if you don't have a BSR. So I'm going to swap over to my foot 24 and then I'll just finish that off, uh, finish the B off using that. So I've changed my foot over, I've taken my BSR off and I've put foot 24 on my uh, free motion embroidery foot and this is an open toe foot so you can see where you're going when you're following a design so it's perfect for this job. I'm going to use um, a zigzag stitch, stitch number two. I've got my feed dogs dropped because it's going to be free motion. I'd like my stitch width to be about three as, as we had before and with the length it doesn't really matter what the length is on because it's free motion I'm going to be uh, deciding what the stitch length is by how much I move my hoop. Um, foot pressure again we need to take that down so I'm going to take that down to zero so, I've got, so there's no pressure and I can move my hoop around nice and freely and I could go in and tell the um, machine what foot I'm using so I can press on 1C and I can find foot, oh, foot 24 and there we are, we've got four, foot 24 displayed on the screen. Okay, so now I'm all ready to put my hoop on and to start to sew. Okay, there we are, and that's both letters finished. So now we can take it off the machine and we're gonna turn it into the pocket to place on the, on the bathrobe. So I've pinned my pocket shape onto my robe using my lovely heart-shaped pins. And now I'm just going to set the screen up for this. So I've got foot uh, 1D on and I've engaged my jewel feed because this is gonna help me feed the fabric through because it's quite thick uh, with, the, with the layers of the toweling. I'm going to use a running stitch. I'm quite happy with the, the standard setting. I'm just going to go in and tell the machine that I have got 1D on, so I can select that there, come out of that. Foot pressure, I'm going to slightly take the foot pressure down just a little bit because, as I say, this is quite thick, bulky fabric, so we probably don't need quite as much foot pressure, so that will help it um, ease its way through. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use the side of the foot as a guide so uh, I'm going to move my needle position over. I'm going to take it over to, um, to four. So that's four positions to the right. 
and uh, I'm going to engage needle down because I'm going to want to stop and pivot as I go around the bottom section and I've also got my knee lift in now which obviously I love my knee lift can't sew without that okay so now we're ready to start and as I say I'm just going to sew around the edge and attach the pocket uh, I've changed to a white thread as well so I can just lower the foot down I can just take that pin out and I'm going to stitch forward and then stitch back a little bit using my quick reverse just to um, secure the, um, the corner of the pocket. So here we go. I'm just going to go forward and then go back a little bit just to secure that. And then I can go forwards again. I'm just going to take my pins out as I go. And again, I'm just going to go back a little bit just to secure the corners. And then the lovely 570 has scissors, so I can just press my scissors and it's going to trim for me. And there we go, we've got our new pocket all sewn on. <laughs> 